Hey, it's Chessie from Squeegee and Ink and welcome back to Printer's Corner. Printer's Corner is where I go around social media and find three of the questions that you've asked me and then I answer them in a little bit more depth on these episodes. We've also introduced a new community poll, so stick around to the end of the episode to see the results from last week's poll. Today's questions are about how we separate images that contain gradients, the second one is about registering screens and thirdly it's about lining up all the screens on press using our in-house free template. If you have any questions for us don't forget to use hashtag printers corner on any of the social media platforms and I'll pick that up for a future episode. Our first question today was asked on a YouTube video which was all about separating a three colour image using Adobe Illustrator. And the question was from Bluefridge7923 and they asked, is there any way to use this method with a gradient? The quick answer is no, because in the video I'm literally just using Illustrator to pick out the different spot colors and really quickly select them and separate them out ready for printing on my film positives. So this wouldn't technically work if you had a gradient in there. However, there are different tactics on how to separate images that contain gradients. And my first one, and the easiest way to do it, is to actually use something called a RIP software. So a RIP software basically takes any greys and tonal range. So say if you had a photograph and you had a black and white photo that you wanted to print out, it automatically sees that there's greys in there and then it converts the greys into halftone dots. And you can dictate how big the halftone dots are and that is determined by like what mesh screen you're gonna be printing with. So for example, if you're using a 43T mesh, you're probably gonna have quite a large halftone dot Anywhere where the RIP software sees greys, it's going to quickly turn it into those halftones for you and eliminates any like skill needed in converting images to halftones. So that is a really, really quick and easy method. And then the second method of using raster images and like really kind of holding on to the tones and textures and gradients in your images is using a software called Separation Studio NXT. I, I tend to call it Separation Studio Next. And what that does is it converts your images into raster, so not vectors anymore, but raster images. And then it just quickly treats all of the data in the image and it converts it into the different layers for you. It's, it's really, really cool and I'm making more videos on it all the time because it's such a useful tool for screen printers. And it eliminates a lot of the decision making in separating images in things like Photoshop where um, it's quite a lengthy process. You can download Separation Studio NXT from Solutions for Screen Printers, and they've got free trials, and they've even set up all the squeegee viewers with a discount code. The discount code is CRP5. Lastly, one other way to treat raster images and get the tonal range and gradients would be to do it quite manually in Photoshop using bitmaps. This isn't something I have a huge amount of um, experience doing because I've always gone to halftones and using rips, but there are lots and lots of YouTube videos and resources on how to convert your photos, especially into bitmaps ready for screen printing. So that is my answer. No, technically the method that I used in Illustrator won't work for you, but you've got loads of backup options that are really good. Our second question is from Nabel1989 Chowdhury. And they said, hashtag printers corner, please can you make a video for registration multiple colors? Yes, I have actually made a few videos on this and I'm gonna link them in the description below because I want you to watch one after the other because um, the first one goes through how we separate a design that's quite typical <laughs> in our studio and it's basically a vector-based design and we separate it on the computer then we print the films and then the second video is all about how we physically print that on the press so if you watch them one after the other you'll get the entire process and see exactly how we do it so i think that's quite a good useful resource for you but typically we've got some templates on our website which kind of correspond to those videos as well so hopefully i've covered a lot of the process of how we do our separating and registration 
Um, there's always more registration videos to come, so look out on our channel because soon I'm going to be doing one about SIM process. And it's, it seems like it's going to be a different method for registering, but actually it's always basically the same. We use the same templates, we expose the screens in the same way, and we line them up and press in the same way. So hopefully you'll get a really good overview from those two videos, and then you'll just be able to repeat that process with whatever design comes in the studio. Our third question today is from Luke Haynes734, and they said, can you show us how to register screens a multicolor job? For registration template, to how to put your template in the same spot every time so that the screen lines up the same every time to lining it up on the screens. We, again, we have done this kind of video before and look in the description for the two videos, but I'm gonna just roughly talk you through the process. If you don't have a Trilock system, which is a relatively expensive system to put on your press, the way that we do it isn't going to be millimeter perfect, but it's going to get you most of the way there. And that's the most important bit. So what our system does is we have a digital file on our Illustrator program and we drag and drop the artwork in there. Then we basically use the registration marks that are on the template that you can download for free. And then we just make sure that all of the layers have the same registration marks and they line up to our digital template. We then print the film positives, lay them all out, make sure that the registrations all line up, which they pretty much always do, unless I did something weird and nudged one. And then we expose them on the exposure unit, but we put our printed out template, which is the same one as on the digital file, but it's printed out in a physical form. We lay that over the top of our screens, and then we line up the registration marks to the grid that we've made on our template. And what that does is it means that we're exposing the images in the same location on the screens. And screens are all made slightly differently in different sizes. So there might be like a millimeter or two or even a centimeter difference between where the, the images is located on the screens. But by the time you get it on press, you're almost all the way there. And then finally, we always attach our film positives to the platen. We like have a sticky board and we make sure that the film positive is really secure on there. And then when we pull the screen down, we can literally just look through the registration marks, keep pushing it down with like quite a minimal off contact so that there's not too much, it's not too difficult to see them. Keep pushing them down, make sure they line up. And that is, that's the method that we use on all of our images. It doesn't matter how complex the image is, that method is by far the most reliable that we've ever found. To round up this week's question, which is about how we make registering our screens as easy as possible without using a Trilock system. And the answer is we use our templates, which you can download from our website. And secondly, we attach our film positive that we use to expose our screens onto the platen and we register that way. Community poll. And now it's time for this week's community poll. If you'd like to get involved and cast your vote in our community poll, which is always about garment decoration, then you can go on our YouTube channel and then go into the community tab. And there I've got all the week's polls. And you can also just go back and answer the previous week's questions if you want to as well. This week's question was, which would you print with for your own brand? And the possible answers were water-based ink, plastisol, DTG, DTF or vinyl. And plastisol came out really, really strong with 60% of the vote. I don't think that's a surprise. And um, it just shows that screen printing is still the dominant method of garment decoration and the one that the printers are using to showcase their skills and what they're doing for their own brand. I hope you liked this week's episode of Printer's Corner and don't forget, the Printer's Corners come out every single Monday so you can vote in the poll, ask me more questions using hashtag Printer's Corner and I'll be sure to pick those up when they're asked and produce a new video every single week, making sure that all the garment decoration questions are answered. 